Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be starting a reading new horror books vlog. <laughs> And so in this reading vlog, I'm going to be reading three new horror releases that I'm very, very excited about. First one is going to be Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And then the second one is going to be Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. And the third one is going to be The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I actually have the audiobook for The Only Good Indians. I got this through Libro. I actually have already filmed the entire reading vlog and I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of a hot mess and it doesn't really flow together all cohesively without me letting you know what was going on during this week. So to start things off, I started Mexican Gothic first. That was like the very first book I picked up for this and when I first started it, I was having a tough time with it. I was really struggling. I just got to page 50 of Mexican Gothic and Last night I read 30 pages of this and then this afternoon I've only been able to read 20 pages of this because I keep getting so distracted because I'm so bored by this story. Like literally nothing's happening and I think the fact that this book is historical fiction is something I just decided to ignore I guess when I was like really excited to read this because I was just thinking it's horror so I'm gonna love it anyways. But so far I feel like this book is just kind of like 90% historical fiction vibes and like 10% horror vibes, if any horror vibes so far. And I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about this one too because I know my friend Jesse over at Bowties and Books, they really dislike this book. So that was kind of a red flag to me right away about this book, but then my friend Mikay just read it and he really liked it. And I don't know, it seems like this one's getting a lot of mixed reviews so far, but so far I'm feeling more like I'm going to be bored out of my mind reading this book right now. And the language used in this book is also very like old language, like which makes it feel extra historical, which makes it feel more boring to me, I guess. Uh, I was just, I really had high hopes for this one because it just sounded really interesting, but I don't know. I don't know if this one's gonna be for me, but don't you worry because we'll get back to Mexican Gothic. But for now, I was feeling pretty frustrated with the beginning of this. I was like considering DNFing this book, honestly, but instead of DNFing it, I just set it aside for the time and I decided to pick up Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay instead. All right, friends, finally come to that time. Look what came in the mail today. One of my most anticipated books of the year. I can't even believe I'm holding this. I pre-ordered this a little while ago and honestly seeing it in person is just completely stunning. This is gonna be my next read and I'm really excited about it because all I know about it is it's like a horror post-apocalyptic book and I pretty much just pre-ordered this because of how much I love The Cabinet at the End of the World and this is his next book that seems the most similar to that one. But this one, all I know about it is it takes place in Massachusetts and it's been overrun by an insidious virus that is spread by saliva. A little bit like rabies because it causes confusion and loss of inhibition, terrible hallucinations, and gives rise to hydrophobia and aversion to water but unlike rabies the disease has a terrifyingly short incubation period of an hour or less those infected both humans and animals quickly lose their minds and are driven to bite and infect as many others as they can before they die or are killed and then i think it follows this doctor who receives a frantic phone call from her friend and i'm so excited to read this i think this is going to be absolutely terrifying to be reading right now you know during a pandemic but i think that's just going to add to the horror for me and i just i have a good feeling about this one like could this book be as good as the troop like i don't know like that's my favorite horror that i've read this year so far it's about 10 50 at night right now so i'm planning on just jumping into this tonight and this book is surprisingly not too long it's only like just at like 300 pages and <sighs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Seriously, look at how beautiful this opening title page is. Like, wow, I love this. Look at how cool every time it gets to a new part, it's like a dark page. Like, I really love when books do that for some reason. Like, when they have like a very standout page like this. Oh, it just looks so cool. <laughs> Oh my gosh. 
So I just finished that first little section of the book before we get to part one and it was 22 pages long and I'm stressed like that was such an intense opening scene and it was so good and so creepy and Paul Tremblay's writing is like genuinely terrifying. So far this is off to a great freaking start and now it looks like in part one we're going to be getting the doctor's point of view so wow what a start to this book. I feel so alive right now. Dude and the Midnight aka one of the best bands just came out with a new album like literally right now and it's called monsters like what perfect timing i love listening to their music while i'm reading it's just like so spooky and great morning it is the next morning and last night i got to part two of survivor song it's at page like 125 ish so i got a good chunk of this done last night and so far, I'm really enjoying it. I will say though, I still feel like this book is in the mode where we're like building up towards something happening and I'm just kind of like waiting for that something to happen. But I'm really enjoying the writing of this so far. Like God, especially reading this right now, it just feels very much like this is like mirroring our reality right now. The way that they're talking about like the spread of misinformation to the people and, and how everyone's going to a full-blown panic over this virus or they're thinking it's not even something that they should be worrying about and how the hospitals are getting overwhelmed and how many beds do they have and like everybody's preparing to go into quarantine and everything's gonna get shut down and like it just feels like it's mirroring what's happening in our world right now so much that it's like adding to the terror of it like honestly it was kind of freaking me out a little bit last night but i will say that paul tremblay is so great at writing really good characters because i really do care about two these two female characters that we're following and i think he's really good at writing their backstories and making them just feel so real and so human because in this book we're following this girl natalie who's eight months pregnant something happens to her that's pretty traumatic right at the beginning of this book and then we're following her friend who's this doctor. They were both roommates in college when they were in college and so now she's like calling her up and she needs her help to like deal with the situation. And the friend that's the doctor is also very interesting to read about because it's interesting to read about a doctor who has more of an understanding on this virus and like what's going on. Whereas reading from Natalie's point of view, she's constantly questioning like, are they telling me the full truth or like, is there something they know that I don't? Which is definitely something that I feel right now with like doctors and coronavirus. Like, I don't know. Just the fact that this virus, like the way it works, like it literally has an hour incubation period. So after you get saliva or you get bit or whatever it is, like how it transfers the virus, after you get it you have an hour incubation period so like you start showing symptoms within an hour and then you just go fucking crazy i guess and that's honestly so scary to me like can you imagine if coronavirus had that kind of incubation period like literally one hour like you get it and within one hour you start showing all the symptoms like that's crazy maybe it would be better though because since coronavirus can take up to like five days it's a lot of like us not really knowing if we're sick or not where i feel like as in this book you're just like you just immediately know and you're just like we're fucked but yeah i love this pair of women that we're following in this book i find them both to be very interesting characters and i care about both of them and i'm excited to see where the story goes i'm really interested in just in seeing where part two is gonna go it's about 11 30 at night right now and i just got home from work about two hours ago and now i'm gonna jump back into survivor song I'm so excited but i can't stay up too late reading tonight because i have to wake up at nine for work in the morning good morning so last night i did get to page 226 of survivor song i read about another 100 pages and i'm really close to part three like i'm only a few pages away from part three but i was just so tired last night that i ended up falling asleep but i feel like i'm still enjoying the book but i feel like part two is actually like really really slow and not a whole lot happened and i think my biggest issue with like apocalyptic type fiction like this is that i feel like a lot of the story is always like the characters traveling from one place to the next and then it's kind of about what they experience like while they're on the road of like traveling and i feel like i'm just still waiting for them to get to their destination and i feel like that's when the true like stuff is going to be happening in this book so i feel like i've just been kind of like still waiting for something to happen but i am still really like enjoying these two characters that we're following but i don't know i'm just like i feel like i'm just like waiting still so i feel like these last 100 pages were kind of like okay so hopefully it finishes strong but 
I am on my way to work. I work all day today. Hello again. So it is Saturday afternoon. I'm on break at work right now. I'm still on break for like another hour <laughs> because it's really slow today. We got hour and a half breaks today. So I just finished eating and now I'm gonna jump into this book. So hopefully I can get a decent chunk of this done while I'm sitting here in the office and uh, yeah. I just got off of work a little bit early, but while I was on break, I finished Survivor Song. <sighs> and like, I don't know how I feel about it. I think the ending just kind of like, <sighs> I don't know, I didn't really like it, which sucks. But I guess I'll try to form more coherent thoughts on the way home, but I, I didn't like it. I'm sad, I feel major disappointment right now. <laughs> Made my stomach plunge, I had a middle seat and the woman beside me kept the window shade open the entire time. Damina reaches up and touches my cheek. So, Survivor song. Hmm. Super bummed right now, you know, because this was one of my most anticipated books of the year and I was anticipating giving this book five stars. And especially when I started it, like that opening scene in this book is so good. And I feel like this is one of those cases where this book had so much potential and I just can't help feel like let down and disappointed. I don't know, I guess this is one of those books where it's like the fear is like a real life fear, you know? Because like you don't wanna see someone you love go through something like this. And I think that that's the most terrifying thing about this book. And I think that this book really does that well. Like watching a loved one go through something like this is fucking awful and terrible. But honestly, I just feel like this book never really went anywhere for me. And like some reviewers were saying that this book is very fast paced, but I would actually disagree. I think it's very slow moving and very hard to get through. And you're constantly just like waiting for something to happen, like something interesting to happen. And I just feel like it never really went anywhere. And like the ending was like somewhat satisfying, but I was mostly just annoyed because I feel like this could be like part one of a story, you know, like I just want more. I just thought we would get to explore more about this world and this virus and we just didn't really do that a whole lot. Didn't really enjoy this one. I'm like, I'm debating between giving it like two and three stars just because I really did like the beginning and I thought the first 50 pages were like really, really solid. But then the last half of the book was just like so slow for me and just, I feel like I might be the only freaking person that actually prefers The Cabin at the End of the World over this book because I know a lot of people had so many issues with The Cabin at the End of the World and I just absolutely loved The Cabin at the End of the World. I loved everything about it. I loved the like slow building tension of The Cabin at the End of the World and how these people are like breaking into their home and it's like so intense, you know? Like the entire book was so intense for me in that one and my anxiety was like so bad the whole book and then I really, really loved the ending of The Cabin at the End of the World, which I know is kind of an unpopular opinion, I guess. But with this one, I don't know, I feel like it started off so strong and I just had really high hopes that I was gonna love it as much as I love his other book. And then it just never really went there. It just was very mild, I feel like, the entire book. I was just kind of bored. And I didn't really like the other two characters that we get introduced to. I really did enjoy the two lead female characters that we have in this book, but then all the other characters, like, I could not give two shits about. I rarely ever read, you know, apocalyptic type of fiction anyways. Like, I mostly read, like, you know, horrors and thrillers, but it's really rare for me to read something that's apocalyptic like this, so maybe this just isn't my genre. I don't know. I'm sad. I'm making pizza because I'm sad. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. It has been a couple of hours. It is time to start the next horror book for this vlog, even though I feel like this vlog is a disaster so far. The next book that I'm going to be starting is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, and I'm actually going to be listening to the audiobook for this one on Libro because this book actually doesn't come out until July 14th. This upcoming Tuesday, 
but it's currently Saturday today. It's the 11th. I'm so thankful to Libro because I'm, I'm a part of their ALC program, which is advanced listening copies, so I can get audiobooks in advance from them before the books actually come out, which is super helpful because I really wanted to read this book this week and I was able to get my hands on the audiobook. So I'm just gonna like lay in bed for the rest of the night, listen to this audiobook. On Libro, I got 2.25 times speed going so I can get through it pretty quick. It's only eight hours and 37 minutes, so it's not too long of an audiobook. Yeah, I'm gonna be listening to it all night. I don't work tomorrow, so I don't know how late I'm gonna be able to stay up, but I think I'm just gonna try to listen to this while I play a game on my phone so that I can really try to focus on what's happening and I'm gonna shut off all the lights so it's dark and scary and it's just gonna be a really fun time. Last night I did end up getting 37% of the way through the Only Good Indians. So far, I feel like it's pretty creepy and so far the vibe that I get from this book is that it's going to end up being more literary fiction and not as much horror, but the horror that has been experienced for me so far has been pretty creepy and pretty scary and not gonna lie, reading some of this book in the dark last night was making me want to turn the light back on and I think this book is giving me this fear of elk in the same way that imaginary friend was giving me this fear of deer. God, I don't know what it is about like some animal behavior, you know, like sometimes when animals act very strangely it's really scary to me and I just kind of like the idea of this book because if you didn't know anything about like what this book is even about it basically follows these four people who live on this indian reservation and they do something really kind of maybe terrible questionable 10 years ago and then this entity is like bent on revenge and it's like coming to try and haunt them in the future or get revenge on them in any way they can and it's just kind of scary and one of the characters 10 years later is experiencing these hallucinations that are pretty mm, terrifying or at least I would be freaking terrified if that was happening to me and I really like that this is an own voices story I like too that they compare this author Stephen Graham Jones to Jordan Peele and they said like he's the Jordan Peele of like fiction writing and so far I would definitely agree because I feel like the, this book is already kind of showing some like social commentary on things. And yeah, so far I'm enjoying it, but I can see how this writing might be kind of dense if you were reading it physically because I was looking at a lot of the reviews of this book and they were all saying that the writing was really hard to get into, but so far listening to the audiobook has been pretty great. Like it's just getting me through it, I think. Whereas if I was reading it physically, I might be struggling to get through it, but I'm enjoying it so far. Hello there, it is now nighttime, and I have been listening to the audiobook a little bit today, but not as much as I wanted to. I actually like went outside and did things today, like I went to a park and was like being outdoors for like the first time this whole summer so yeah didn't read as much as i wanted to during the day but i'm at 65 percent of the way through the audiobook right now and it's letting me know that i only have an hour and 21 minutes left at the speed that i'm reading it at so i think i'm just gonna try to finish this tonight and honestly i feel like this last chunk that i've just listened to has just been kind of like boring like i feel like i'm just waiting for something to happen so i'm hoping that this last hour really kicks it into gear and i hope some really weird shit starts happening because i am quickly losing interest <laughs> and i swear if i don't end up liking this book either then like this vlog is such a waste <laughs> I just finished listening to the audiobook. It's like 12.30 in the morning now. I feel mostly scared and confused after finishing this audiobook. And I feel like I could honestly listen to those last 10 minutes like over and over again and I still don't really know exactly what I just listened to. But I think this was good. It just, it wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be, I guess. Like, I feel like this is like a solid three-star book for me. While I did find some of this writing to be like very 
creepy and suspenseful and kind of weird i don't know the book as a whole didn't really do a whole lot for me but some of the imagery in the writing was like very visual like i felt like i could see that shit and that was really scary and all of the stuff about the elks you know kind of like as i said this morning was really creepy and really effective and i really liked that about this book but honestly like i would have trouble even explaining to you what this book is really even about because it's still just like such a mystery to me even after finishing it and i do feel like this writing was just kind of dense which is why i'm glad i had the audiobook because i don't know if i would have been able to get through this book without the audiobook but i don't know like the writing wasn't my favorite it definitely felt more literary fiction than anything i still enjoyed this just not as much as i was hoping i would i guess but there were definitely some creepy scenes that will stick into my brain now. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I have mixed feelings about this one, I guess. I thought it was just okay. I wanted to, like, love it and, like, be obsessed with it. But I think it's just, it's just alright. But it was interesting because in the audiobook, for the last little part, we get a part from the author. Like, just talking about the book and stuff. So, that was really interesting to, like, hear some of his perspective on, like, the writing process. So I ended up deciding to pick up Mexican Gothic again and give it a second go because I thought, why not? You know, I was seeing a lot of really great reviews from a lot of my friends and I was like, I will just push through the hard to read writing. And I'm back at it with Mexican Gothic. Hi, I have decided to pick up Mexican Gothic again because I don't know, I feel like reading only those first 50 pages wasn't giving this book a fair chance and because I know so many of my friends have really really enjoyed this one and I keep seeing really positive reviews for it and I'm like, you know what? I just need to push a little further and I'm now 104 pages. I've got to say I am starting to enjoy this book more. I feel like the beginning of this book, the writing style was like very dense and just like hard to get into. But now I feel like the story is actually starting to pick up, you know, because like the 50, the first 50 pages I feel like was a lot of setup to the story that they were eventually going to go into. And now I feel like we're definitely starting to get to the main part of the story, which is very interesting. I do like the mood of this book and the vibe of it. It feels very like you're in a haunted house, which is exactly what I signed up for. And I love like the setting right now, like especially in the scene right now that I'm reading, she's in like a misty cemetery at night and it's like very spooky. And her cousin that this book is mainly about her cousin who is like seeing things and she's saying there's like ghosts in the walls and the walls are moving and they're talking to her and it's all just kind of like creating this very creepy vibe that I'm kind of enjoying now because I feel like I don't know like the first 50 pages maybe I just wasn't in the mood for this or like I just I don't know I do think the first 50 pages were like really really slow and it almost made me want to DNF this book honestly but I'm kind of glad that I'm giving it more of a chance now because I do think it's starting to get interesting the writing style isn't bothering me as much this time around but maybe that's because now I'm going into it knowing that the writing is going to be a little more dense than I was originally expecting hello I just got home from the lake a little bit ago it was a very fun afternoon I haven't read pretty much anything since I last updated you. I'm still, I'm on page 116 and I do work in the morning, but it's only about 10.45 at night right now. So I'm planning on reading some of this tonight. Hopefully I can read quite a bit of it. And also I was messaging this girl on Instagram, Diana, and she told me that there's a playlist on Spotify for Mexican Gothic that the author created, I guess. And yeah, so I think I'm just gonna like listen <laughs> to this playlist while I read the book to just like get fully into the spooky mood. So perfect timing to find out about this playlist. Like seriously, this is so cool. So all right, let's do it. First song. Already love it. <laughs> Last night I got 200 pages into Mexican Gothic and I'm still enjoying it. I feel like it is kind of still 
a little bit slow because I feel like it's building towards something, but I do really like the atmosphere and the vibes in the book. And I like the fact that it's talking about like sleepwalking and how weird and kind of creepy sleepwalking is because I used to be a pretty big sleepwalker when I was a kid and it's always like freaked me out and I've only done it maybe like once or twice as an adult, but it's still like really, really weird. Like sleepwalking has always been something that I've thought was like really, really creepy. And so I love the fact that it's using that quite a bit in this book. But I'm off to work all day today and I'm bringing the book with me in case I get a break today. Also, that playlist that I was listening to last night was so good and I actually found a few different songs that I just like added to my own playlist because I enjoyed them so much. And there was like a lot of different like spooky covers of a bunch of songs that I really enjoy like Girls Just Wanna Have Fun and just a bunch of just a bunch of stuff. It was it's a really great playlist. I highly recommend. I can link it down below for you. Yeah, it's a good time. So I think I'm just gonna listen to that while I'm on the way to work because if I listen to an audiobook right now, I'm gonna fall asleep while I'm driving. Hello, I am on my lunch break and I just ate so much food. I was so hungry and I ate so much and now I'm slightly regretting it anyways i still have about a little less than an hour of my break left so i'm gonna start mexican gothic and i only have about like 100 pages left so i want to read a little bit of this now and then i shouldn't have any problems finishing this tonight so that's exciting <laughs> to do a quick update and let you know that I am back home and I am reading Mexican Gothic. It's almost 11 o'clock at night now and I am 230 pages into it. I did not end up reading as much of it today on my break as I thought I would because I had some other things that I needed to do while I was on break. And today was one of my favorite co-workers last day working there so pretty depressed about that and so I wanted to go over to the grocery store and get him like this giant Red Bull and this cute little cupcake and just you know <laughs> I wasn't reading as much on my break as I thought I was going to be but I only have about 70 ish pages left so I shall have no issue finishing this now and as far as the ending is going um I think it's going okay so far there was a pretty interesting plot twist that I didn't see coming and I'm pretty invested in that but also I feel like this ending is being a little bit more dramatic than I would like it to be so I kind of hope it keeps the same kind of like subtle creepy tone that it's had throughout most of the book but so far it's looking like it's just gonna be really dramatic and chaotic at the end so I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this but I'm planning on finishing this now and I'm excited! Gosh, I did the dishes at work tonight and it literally just destroys my nails like I literally just did my nails last night. Look at that. What the heck, man? This is what it's like working in a restaurant when you have to do the dishes. It's like, ugh, I literally just touched these up last night, but whatever, it's fine. All right, I am turning back on this playlist because it's fantastic. And I am gonna finish this book right now. I really love this playlist though. Like I'm kind of obsessed with this song, Black Walls by Chromatics. And then these top three right here, oh my god, amazing. Like, I downloaded this one, but for real, these are all good. And then this one, The Killing Moon, is in Donnie Darko, so it just, like, has major Donnie Darko vibes. It is now midnight, and I just finished Mexican Gothic. And I don't know how I feel about this ending. I feel like it was all right and i don't really know how i feel about the romance it just feels like it's kind of like randomly thrown into this book i just think this book didn't really need the romance element to it and i don't know i'm kind of torn whether to rate this book a three star or a 3.5 star because this is definitely probably the thing i enjoyed most reading this week during this reading vlog and because while I wasn't a huge fan of like the build up, like it definitely took me a long time to get into this story because the writing is very dense and very difficult to get used to, at least for me it was. 
and then I wasn't a huge fan of the way it ended either but I was definitely a huge fan of like the middle chunk of this book I thought there was a lot of really creepy scenes and great moments and I think this is my first time reading a gothic horror like I don't really know exactly what gothic horror is like I'd have to look into more of what exactly that is because I'm still pretty new to horror so I don't exactly know if this is my first gothic horror, but I think it is. So I think if you're somebody who enjoys gothic horror, I definitely think you would enjoy this because of the vibes of like the house and like the house really felt like its own character in this book, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, I don't know. This was like okay. I mean, I am glad that I ended up picking it back up and giving it another shot and powering through to the end because I do think it was worthy of reading. I definitely would give this somewhere between three and three and a half stars. I don't really know yet, but I enjoyed my experience reading this, even though it was a struggle bus at times. And even though I feel like this vlog was a total epic fail, um, at least I enjoyed something. And yeah, I mean, I think the greatest thing too about reading this was discovering that playlist because all of those songs are straight fire and I've been listening to it nonstop and I just can't wait for October and Halloween time. It just has like the perfect vibes. Mexican Gothic ended up being the thing that I enjoyed reading the most this week, which was a big plot twist that I did not see coming, honestly. That's pretty much the video. <laughs> This one did not go really to plan. I was truly expecting to love all three of these books. Like I thought all three of these would be easy five stars for me. I only ended up being really impressed by this one, but I did like The Only Good Indians, but it just wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be. Like, wow, Survivor Song, what a freaking bust, dude. This book was so boring, oh my god. But yeah, um, that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, if you enjoyed this one, I previously did in April, I did a video called Reading Three Hyped Horror Novels that went probably a lot better than this one did. So if this kind of concept interests you, then I would definitely recommend checking out that video. But I would still like to continue to do these kind of like reading three horror books and just kind of like figuring out my taste because I am still so new to horror that I don't really know exactly like what my taste is and exactly what I like yet so I do like doing these kind of like taste tests of horror books but that's gonna be all for this video so thank you guys so much and if you've read any of these books please let me know your thoughts on them as well and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon with a new video.